So the first thing you're going to want to do is in the camera itself, go into the menu. All right, so you're, wanna, you're going to want to go into the smartphone register area and this screen pops up. You might have saw this when you first turned the camera on as well. I'm going to do register smartphone or smart device. It says Bluetooth pairing is required. So it's going to turn the Bluetooth on automatically. I'm going to click OK. And now Bluetooth is turning on. Start pairing with supported cameras, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I'm just going to launch the Imaging Edge app here. And camera connection registration, that's where we're at. So let me hit that. And look what it says. It sees the A7 IV. You see how it automatically sees it? That's because it put it in a proper state. It turned Bluetooth on and it's basically waiting now. So I'm just going to click register the following model. See what happens. So now look, it says pairing, register, registers, pairs the cameras, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to click pair. And here we go. And now we're going to have to do this pairing game here where we tap OK, tap OK. Pairing complete, OK, OK. So there it is. Now the, the smartphone is now paired to the A7 IV. So now I can view and import, I can remote shoot, and I also have setup options. But before I do that, let me show you how to connect the iPad. All right, so I'm just going to launch the Imaging Edge app here. And it says Camera Connect Registration. So I'm going to click that. And now it says register the following model, A7 IV. I'm going to do register the following model. See what happens. So the camera just fell asleep there because I didn't touch it for a minute. So now you can see here it says confirm right there. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but I'm going to click that and it's going to fail. Look, menu network connect smartphone, register smartphone, it's saying. But remember, I already did that with the smartphone. So if I go to menu and I go to smartphone register, it says this device is already connected, you see? It's already connected to another smartphone. So it's basically telling you that you're screwed. If you go down here, guys, instead of going to smartphone register where it doesn't work, like I said, here's the fail menu. Um, that does not work because it's already connected to the cell phone. So if you go down here and you go to Bluetooth, you can click on this pairing option. Also, in managed pair devices, if you go in there, it'll show you what's currently connected. So if you guys need to delete a device ever, it's in there. So keep that in mind. You might have to go in there and delete de devices occasionally. Like if you get a new cell phone, for example, and you're trying to connect a new phone that you just got, you're going to have to delete your old phone. And that's where you do it. Very important. All right. So up here, if you go to pairing, now it says perform pairing with the device and it looks like it's ready. So now notice on the iPad screen, it says pairing. I'm just going to click the pairing button. All right. So pairing in progress. And I'm going to click OK on the phone. I'm going to click pair on the tablet. And there it is. It did that same dance that we did before. And now I can control it with my iPad as well. So you see the trick there? You have to register. Well, you can register one device using the smartphone feature. And then if you want to add more devices, you got to go into the pairing option. All right, so now we're ready to go. Now the tablet is set up, the camera is set up, and now we can do transferring and remote shooting. So you can do that. You can control from the camera or you can control from the device. So in my case, I'm just going to control from the iPad. Now check this out. So right here it says view and import, remote shooting, and setup. I just want to go into setup and show you some of the information in here. It has location information linkage. That's off. You could turn that on, guys, if you want the GPS info. So I'm just going to... Well, I clicked yes, but transfer notification settings. So we're going to get a notification there. So the setup is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So check this out. I'm going to now click view and import. And what it's going to do is it's automatically going to connect to the camera. And I just have to hit this join button. On the iPad, I have to hit join. On the cell phone, I don't have to do that for some reason. But anyways, this is what's so cool about registering it because now it just connects automatically. All right, so as you can see over here, we have different folders or you know, dates, it's organized by date. So here you can see a couple videos. Now these videos were taken with how the camera was at default. I initialized the camera and I was doing some testing and that's how I figured out a couple of mistakes that I made with my original Imaging Edge app video. I'm really sorry guys for those of you that watched that. Um, it was still was a decent video, but I did make a couple of mistakes. That's why I'm redoing it here. So anyways, in this file format, the XAVC, you can copy that over. So these video files will copy over and that's what the camera set to 60p. I had the camera when I did the original video was set to the highest quality 4k and that did not want to copy over it like wasn't supported. 
So if I go in here, you can see I have raw files. You could now transfer raw files with the Sony a7 IV, but you do have to go into settings and you have to set the options here for original. If you want to transfer raw files, you got to go to original there. I'm put that back to two megabits because I don't want to transfer raw files myself and go back. And then at that point, all you have to do is select and you can transfer the file. And now it did not transfer raw files. It, it made proxy media. And that's because I don't have the camera set up correctly for that purpose. So let me hit cancel. Let me click OK. Let me go into the menu here. All right, guys, so if we go back into this screen where the Smartphone Connect stuff is, it's in the network settings there, and if you go to Select On Cam and Send option, if you click that, this is where you can change those options to RAW and stuff like that. So I had mine set to two megabits here. That's why it created the proxy media for me, which is actually what I want for my purposes. I know a lot of you guys want to transfer RAW files, though, so this is how you do it. You go in here, you go to Original, that will send the original size file. So even if you're shooting JPEG, instead of the proxy 1500 pixel or whatever it is, 2000 pixels, it'll send the original size. So full resolution there if you want JPEG. Now, if you want RAW, you can go down here and select RAW or RAW plus JPEG and RAW plus the other new JPEG format. So that's where you guys would go set that if you want to transfer RAW files. And the sending target, this is for video files. So you can do original, proxy, so that's how you do that. I'm going to leave it set to proxy for now. If you guys are editing video files on your tablet or whatever though, you're probably going to want that set to original, just so you know. So that's where those options are. And now, from the camera, I just want to show you from the camera if I want to transfer photos. So if I go into the playback menu by hitting the playback button on the back of the camera, I'm looking at an image, this image right here, and then if you hit the function button, the function button doubles as a send to smartphone feature. So it's like a shortcut to the send to smartphone, and now it pops up this screen and it's asking you what do you want to do. I'm just going to do this image, so I'm going to do yes. And look, it automatically transferred, if you see on the tablet. Do you see how it automatically transferred over here? It just like automatically popped up because the device was already connected. So it just pushed it right over, which is really cool. And notice here on the bottom it says imported images. So you can just click that and then you can view your images. This is the one I just imported. And you can see it looks really good. And you can hit the I there for the info. It'll give you all the EXIF data. This app really is pretty awesome. I know you guys have been really frustrated with this app over the years because, you know, it's not very consistent and it crashes, it doesn't stay connected, it's hard to connect and stuff. But this really is a much better version in my opinion. So let me show you guys how to remote shoot with this beast. So I'm going to move the camera now. I'm going to keep the iPad here. I'm going to move the camera over to my lab scene that I have set up for another video I'm going to make. And I'm going to remote control the camera from here, but the camera is going to be like five feet away. So with that being said, let me move this over there. Let me just turn on the camera because it just went into uh, standby mode here. So I just turned the camera on. You see how it just automatically popped right back up? They grayed out when the camera went into sleep mode, but they just popped back up instantly when I turned the camera back on. And like I said, the camera's like five feet away. So I'm going to do remote shooting, and it's going to connect via Bluetooth. And I'm just going to click join. All right, guys, so here we are. Notice how touch to track is enabled on the top of the screen. And I'm in aperture priority mode to take photos. And notice how the IAF is automatically coming up, as well as the facial recognition. It's pretty awesome. And if you hold the button down, it'll focus. If you let go, it'll take the shot. And there it is. You could just tap it quick and it'll just take the shot as well. But I like holding it just to make sure that the focus is correct. And guys, you have all these options. If I click the menu button here, just look at all these options in the menu. File format. I mean, you can change pretty much everything. And then I'm just going to click done. Also, you can rotate the screen here. Notice on the top how you can rotate the screen if you need to, depending on how you have your tablet set up. That's a pretty cool feature. All right, so let me change the mode to video mode. So now I'm going to go into aperture priority video mode. There it is. So now I'm in video mode, and let me hit record. There it is. It's recording. And just touch around the screen, and the focus is working while recording video. And it's got the frame display and the IAF so you can see it. This is really sweet, guys. This is a great improvement in my opinion. And on the a7 IV and the Sony A1, you could now copy RAW files. It's only supported for those two cameras at this time, just so you guys know. 
So check this out. While recording, it lets me change the aperture. And I can change the ISO and stuff if I want. Really powerful. White balance and so forth. And just for reference, this is what it looks like on my cell phone. So it looks very similar. It's just the menu is laid out a little bit different. It's obviously way easier to use on the iPad because it's so much bigger. But this is what it looks like on the uh, Samsung here. And it works exactly the same. You can select your modes and stuff. It's just laid out slightly different, that's all. But as you can see, it still works just the same. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it for this video. I really hope you got something out of it. If you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know. Um, but the key points here are the, the app now registers with the camera, which makes it much easier to connect. It's a more turnkey solution. It seems to be way more stable. And you could now do touch to focus during video if you're using tracking. And on top of that, you can transfer RAW files with the Sony a7 IV. So all good stuff. All right, guys, I'll catch up with you next time. Take care.